Hi, uh, welcome to a, another C3UG video. I am Gordon Hagfield. Graham? Yeah, Graham Makers from Bright Tech Systems in Vancouver. Heiko? Heiko Wood from Harbourlight Software in beautiful Shelburne, Nova Scotia. Michelle? Uh, Michelle Smith in uh, beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia. And back to Gordon. Okay, um, well, today um, we're going to uh, start a series of uh, videos that's uh, going to be describing the new Identity Federation features uh, found in Domino 1202. And uh, here to, uh, to present that to us is, um, uh, he calls himself the resident paranoid. He's a secure, security architect um, at uh, HCL um, and longtime IRIS associate. Uh, and you probably see him at Lotusphere uh, a bunch of times as well. Uh, so, uh, David Kern um, is presenting today for us. Dave? Um, thank you, Gordon. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Not that I have any idea what time it could be when you're watching this video. It could be 4 a.m. for all I know. So, I hope it's a happy 4 a.m. Um, Gordon said, my name is David Kern, the um, resident paranoid and security architect for the uh, Domino family of products with um, three or four different companies by now, but the current one is indeed HCL. Uh, we'll be talking about a number of different um, features that we've added in 1202. I'd like to start off by talking about the um, OpenID Connect functionality in Domino 1202, or OIDC for short. Now, if any of you have seen any of my presentations at Lotusphere before, you know that I despise passwords. I've been trying to rid the world of these monstrosities for decades now. And I'm thrilled that um, more people are starting to, you know, come to join me in this opinion. And um, I'm no longer fighting against the tide quite so much. So um, OIDC is a form of... Um, identity federation. So this isn't truly eradicating a password as much as it is reducing the number of passwords and the number of credentials that you need to manage. So um, by um, delegating authentication um, to a centralized identity provider, um, you can have um, you know individual systems that are locked down heavily, their physical, physical access is restricted, network access is restricted, um, you have fewer administrators administering these systems. Instead of having many different computers scattered all over the world, each storing and verifying and managing their own passwords. And as we all know, you know, if the users have fewer passwords to remember, you're gonna have happier users. Um, getting rid of passwords is also critical because passwords are a really lousy authentication mechanism. And think about it. Passwords were designed a long time ago in the days of, you know, time sharing systems when the password was really just another way to keep you from typing in the wrong username and ending up in the wrong person's account. The fact that we carried them over to the World Wide Web, to networking, and are using them to handle um, banking and other phenomenally critical exercises, um, other phenomenally critical applications is just absurd. So we've supported federated identity via the SAML protocol and Domino since uh, 9.0. And if that works for you, by all means, keep using it. Um, but the OIDC support that we're gonna be talking about today is also supported by many SAML identity providers. So if you have some applications that work well with SAML today and some applications that you can't use federated identity where users are typing in individual passwords and managing separate passwords, you might be able to use OIDC to integrate those applications onto your existing identity provider. So, how did we end up um, adding this functionality? Well, as it turns out, OAuth authentication has been a top feature request for many, many years. Um, and, you know, OAuth authentication in quotes, because OAuth isn't an authentication protocol. I've, 
I've lost track of the number of times I've had to um, point this out. It is a delegated authorization framework, not an authentication protocol. And people talking about OAuth authentication, for the most part, we're just using basic authentication, which is hideously insecure on top of an OAuth framework. Um, fortunately, what we've discovered is um, OIDC is, you know, an actual authentication protocol built on top of that OAuth 2.0 framework. So we can um, tick both boxes here. We can give people authentication on the OAuth framework via OpenID. So I've given you a few reasons for, you know, why you might want to look at OIDC, but um, we need a little more detail to make any decisions here. So why would you want to use OIDC versus SAML, for example? So OIDC was designed out of the box for uh, not just web applications, um, but for native applications, for mobile applications, and for single page applications, not just web browsers, unlike SAML. And the user agents that are driving the protocol don't need to support posts, forms, and execute JavaScript in order to use OIDC. If you have SAML deployed in your environment, I'm sure you've run into the problem of finding that one smart alecky user who who runs no script and disables JavaScript on everything and then can't log in with your identity provider. Well, that's why, and that problem is gone with OIDC. OIDC is much easier to configure than SAML. You only need to really need to configure one base URL path per provider. You don't need to establish a complicated partnership and exchange information between the service provider and the identity provider. And um, it uses signed JSON web tokens versus signed XML. And um, as we all know, JSON web tokens are, are newer, they're buzzier, they're the kind of things that will make your executives perk up and say, hey, I read about JWT in a news article. And so telling them that you can do that with Domino will give them more enthusiasm for you know Domino and for what you're doing. So we're helping you out here. Um, but JWTs also support newer algorithms than um, signed XML. Most of those SAML um, assertions that you see are signed using RSA. They might be signed using SHA-1 still instead of SHA-256. But with JWTs, you can use elliptic curves. You can use ED25519. You can use SHA-3. You can use all of the new and shiny technologies within JWTs. And finally, because these are much more compact, there's a lot of wasted space in a SAML assertion. Um, these JWTs can be passed around far more easily within a GET request in a web browser um, instead of needing a giant post body. Um, so OIDC, um, I've mentioned that, you know, OIDC authentication is generally referred to as OAuth authentication. If you're looking through Microsoft's documentation, you'll actually see it referred to as modern authentication. This is actually how we ended up um, within you know, HCL getting around to deciding, to finding this functionality, to deciding that we could implement it. Um, we were looking at Microsoft's so-called modern authentication and discovered that their modern authentication was OAuth authentication and discovered that their OAuth authentication, you know, because it doesn't really exist, was actually OIDC authentication over an OAuth 2.0 framework. And took a lot, look at it in more detail and said, wait, we can do this. So they said before, many SAML identity providers also support OIDC, but really if this is just a rehash of SAML, why would you want to use it? Well, one big plus is that um, if you look at around the net, you see login with Google, login with Apple ID. Um, most of those social media logins, those buttons are using the OIDC protocol. So by adding support for OIDC to Domino, we're adding support for you to add this type of um, social authentication into your Domino environment. So, um, there are many applications today that cannot support SAML just due to the type of client that is being used. 
So let's say that you are using a, a simple mobile application. You don't have control over the UI. You can't bring up a web view for a SAML prompt. Um, you can actually handle those limitations with OIDC. Um, as I mentioned before, it's much easier to configure, much easier to administer. And um, because you can use OIDC in non-web browser applications, we are seeing this form of authentication becoming more popular as an alternative for basic authentication. So as we all know, basic authentication is hideously insecure, but that's effectively what most free web protocols still use. If you look at logging in with um, an LDAP server and POP3 and IMAP and SMTP, that username and that password are being sent over the wire effectively in the clear to the server, which then has to verify the password directly. It is possible to use um, OAuth or OIDC authentication in those protocols as well. And no, I'm not saying that you can do that in Domino 1202. In Domino 1202, we've added the support um, for the HTTP web server. In particular, we've added support for HTTP bearer authentication using signed JWTs acquired from OIDC providers and a straight up SAML equivalent OIDC login for users in web browsers. Are there any questions that anyone wants to bring up on this slide or previous ones before we keep moving? It's been awfully quiet and I've been talking to myself quite a bit lately. Um, Dave, uh, can you tell us uh, which of the ODC providers we've tested uh, with? Um, so we have actually tested um, the OIDC login flows with um, a login with Google, with um, Azure Active Directory, and with um, Yahoo's um, social media login, and with um, Keycloak. Uh, those are the four providers that we have tested and um, working for the OIDC login flow in uh, the 1202 timeframe. Now, um, Bearer authentication is um, a bit more complicated. It's a bit less standard. Many providers have legacy um, access token authentications that um, don't follow the OIDC standard. So the um, only um, HD provider that we support for HTTP bearer authentication in 1202 GA is um, Keycloak but we are looking at expanding that functionality um, real soon now. So we've been talking about OIDC mostly in the context of how it compares to SAML. Um, this slide here goes into a bit more detail about the differences in um, the terminology between the two standards. And you know we've talked about most of this already. I'd like to emphasize a couple of simple points here. Uh, one is that um, OIDC was designed for use by lightweight clients. SAML is a fairly heavyweight protocol. It requires full web browser functionality, and it doesn't even work well with a, a single page application within a web browser or a JavaScript application running within a web browser simply because of the limitations of those environments. OIDC will work much better with those clients that would you know traditionally have been using would have been called a an OAuth client. Um, they can leverage this um, OIDC authentication. And similarly, um, from the perspective of the OIDC relying party, which would be Domino in most cases in this environment, um, Domino can dynamically download a provider's metadata from well-known configuration endpoints, so you aren't building a complicated um, SAML partnership and exchanging um, uh, static keys. Those keys are being dynamically pulled by the relying parties from the um, OIDC providers published endpoints. The clients that are running the OIDC protocol only need to support 302 redirects. You don't need to support JavaScript, posts, forms, et cetera. And um, because there is a callback URL 
um, involved in the configuration, you can actually transmit authorization codes between a browser and a non-browser application, like a native app or a mobile app, or even a, um, a web page on a third-party web server somewhere without exposing the credentials that the user used to authenticate to the um, OADC provider to that application. So we'll um, touch on that a little bit later when we start looking at the detailed network flows. <laughs>